In the world of guitars, there aren't many names as instantly recognizable as Gibson. They've been making guitars, banjos, mandolins for over a hundred years. Gibson moved their factory to Nashville in the 1980s. There's no question, if you want to be close to the people who use your instruments, Music City USA is the place. But in 2010, tragedy struck. The Cumberland River overflowed, rising over 50 feet. The Gibson factory was flooded out. Millions of dollars of guitars were destroyed. But Gibson has rebuilt and is back in business. For proof, you need to look no further than the parking lot outside the factory. Hey, how are you? Chad Kruger from the rock group Nickelback has come to Gibson to see his very own signature guitar being made. Actually, if uh, we were here May 2nd, mm -hmm. we'd be standing in water up to here right now. Wow. That's, that's how bad the flood was in here. Wow. Yeah. The good people from Gibson said, would you like us to maybe make a Chad model? Wow. I thought that'd be pretty cool, you know? Take everything that I like on, on several different guitars and mash them all together. So we all sat down and just started throwing out like tons and tons of ideas. Ooh, what if it had this? And ooh, what if it could do that? And what if it could shoot? What if the end of it was a flamethrower? That one got shot down. So we, uh, we tossed around a whole bunch of different ideas uh, and tried to keep the guitar under a gazillion dollars. In here we sand the guitars, put wood filler and stain on them, get them ready to paint. I wanted to remove some of the weight. I mean, when you're slinging these around for two hours every single night, um, you, you don't really want to be busting a hip. One of the founding members of Nickelback, Chad Kruger, has been smitten by the guitar since he was, well, barely old enough to be smitten. When I saw my cousin playing with a band in a basement, I was blown away. And then after that, I just, I wanted to play an instrument so bad, uh, especially guitar. A friend sat me down and just showed me the power chord. Da -da! And from the second that happens, you immediately feel like all of your heroes. And you're hooked from there on in. The irony of the situation is when you're broke and you're starving and you could actually use a few more guitars to help with diversity and versatility, you can't get them. And then when you get to the point where you can buy as many as you want, they give them to you for free. That's what it hangs like fresh meat right over yeah, here. You know. Okay. So now well, the good people of Gibson have armed us very well. Including the Blackwater, his new signature guitar. I like it when every single guitar has its own personality, and that really comes through when you can see the wood. So you might have some funky little piece, like for instance, this one, it's a little bit lighter up here. Um, you can see that it's spaced out, and it's got kind of like a tiger effect to it, um, called the tiger stripe um, on some guitars. Um, but I wanted it to just look kind of just dirty, you know, and, and hence the, the name Black Water. Uh, it, it, it sort of looks like something that started off one color and then just kind of laid in the water for a while and just turned into this. 
So what stage are we at now? Right now we're at the stage where your guitar has been painted and we're gonna paint the stars on the side of the fretboard. Okay. On the, on the back of the neck. Now, what have you got to take the paint off huh? once I screw this up? Okay, hey, it'll come right off. So down is, down is air, down is back air is the good stuff. Slowly pull it back. Okay. There's a lot of times when you're just in the dark, like pitch black, and, and you've got to start a song, and you might be on the seventh fret or the ninth fret or wherever it may be. Um, and people can see you in the dark, you just can't necessarily see what you're doing. And this is always weird when the lights come up. Where, where am I? <laughs> you know, and you're trying to find out what fret you're on because you can't really see a couple inches in front of your face. But these really help. See, you see the two dots? These are markers, these are fret markers. Uh, third, fifth, seven, nine, twelve. Um, once we added these stars, um, I, I used to just, you know, like when you, when you did well in elementary school or wh whatever it might be, you'd get those stars. Those used to be on here. It was almost like Braille. So I, I could immediately, da -da -da, and I'd know exactly where I was just by feeling the stars or being able to see that from, you know, while I'm you know, in pitch black. Uh, that was something that we definitely wanted to incorporate. There it is, right there. Bingo! There it is, right there. <laughs> That's the first time I've had spray paint in my hand and didn't write some sort of word. <laughs> so you're going to wait until we walk to the other side of the plant before you sand mine off and redo them the right oh, way? <laughs> that, 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 that right there was great, man. I mean, they really did great. The guitar may have the stars, but it's only half done. Rock guitarist and superstar Chad Kruger of Nickelback has come to the Gibson factory in Nashville to see his signature guitar, the Blackwater, being built right before his very eyes. That right there is a sweet run. Do not trust this to me, because I will launch this thing. Don't worry, I'm I'll run into the one thing you're not supposed to run I'm into. <laughs> that would be another rack. That's this is neck prep. Okay. Uh, these are your guitars, obviously. They've, they've been dry now for five days. Five days. So we're going to pull the uh, masking tape off the fingerboard. Celine here is going to clean off the fingerboard, clean the frets. She's, she's also going to file this binding down around the, the ends of the frets, okay. make sure it looks all nice. It takes her about 10 minutes to do a guitar. So now start to finish on every single guitar. What are we looking at? We're looking at about 20 working days. 20 days. Yeah. Just from slabs of wood to, to a finished product. Since we covered the ends of the frets, you know, yeah. most people just lay the frets on top. Our binding kind of sticks up around it. So it's actually got to be filed by hand. Like that. Oh, I see. Yeah. How does she do that without affecting the wood? She's only hitting the binding. She's maybe scraping the wood a little bit, but she's gonna go back through, and she's gonna scrape the whole fingerboard with a, with a razor blade, kind of shave it. Please don't ask me to do this. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. <laughs> I wouldn't do that to you. That would be all bad. <laughs> So now the second she's done with it, where is this going to go? She's going to get inspected and it's going to uh, go right behind us to buff it. Going to buff it. Yeah. Goes through three stages of buffing. The red wax, kind of abrasive, kind of like a rubbing compound. Uh, heats up the lacquer, smooths it out, lets them move it around a little bit. Uh, then a yellow wax, which is a car wax, basically. Car okay. Base. Then just a polish. These guys are really, they're kind of dancing with the guitars, I can see. Yeah. When they get into it. They, uh, they have to, they kind of have to do that. Here's, he's, yeah, he's got yours over here. He's going to start dancing right here. Do you think the guitar is leading right now in this dance, or do you think he's, uh... I think the guitar is leading, definitely, yeah. You know how, like, everyone else is really gentle when they're holding a guitar? Right. 
Like, they're, they're very careful. They pick it up, set it down, you know, whatever. Everyone's pretty careful with the guitars. Here, at the, the one thing I've noticed is everyone's just like, whatever. <laughs> it's like, they can buff it out. <laughs> absolutely, they can buff it out. So now, once this thing is all shined up, and you can see the ones that are done over there because they are just gleaming. Mm -hmm. They're going to get inspected. Another stage of inspection. So yeah. how many levels of inspection are there? there? There's one at the end of every department. OK. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it, it, it'll leave inspection here and go into final assembly. So to this point, I'm counting somewhere around five. There's already been about five inspections? Yeah. Yeah. The electronics on the Blackwater are particularly important to Chad. We've got uh, a really hot pickup on the back, a uh, nice soft from the front uh, for clean tones. But in terms of clean tones, there's a, there's a knob right here. It's got a, a, a ghost piezo system in it that allows you to turn off these pickups and turn on the, uh, the piezo system, which uh, actually makes it sound like an acoustic guitar. Now, with all the different parts that we stick into a, a Nickelback song, trying to recreate that live is always a challenge. And so when you've got a, you know, a tool like this in an instrument, it just makes, you know, it's like, okay, now I'm going to switch guitars mid-song and I'm going to go over to the acoustic part and play this little thing and then back into the heavies and, you know, whatever it might be. But that little bad boy comes in handy. So this is our final stage. This is the final assembly stage. Brett is uh, so he's just finishing wiring it up. He's put all the parts on it. One thing that we've definitely noticed, because I, I try and get Timmy to move uh, volume knobs and tone knobs around for me all the time mm -hmm. uh, to get stuff closer for me the way I like it. Because right. I want the first thing that I reach down to be what I'm looking for. Right. Um, rewiring stuff on your own, I mean, maybe we need to hire Brett. Maybe um, you need to hire Brett. Um, it's a tone, good one. tone will change a lot. Just when you pick this up, move it over here, and then stick it back down, all oh, of a sudden yeah. the tone has changed a ton. Oh, yeah. You know, so I know how, how important Britt's job is. Britt, are you looking for a job? <laughs> <laughs> He's pretty busy here, I think. He's I think about, so. Yeah. The people who have helped build Chad's signature acts really want to capture the moment. Some guitars I pick up. They got a lot to say, you know, and they and repeatedly give you material. And some guitars just give you nothing. Yeah, and some guitars give you nothing. Chad, this is our wall. It, it, it used to have signatures all over it. Uh, flood got the whole wall wet and it just completely fell apart. So we wow. re-drywalled re it. Um, really like you to sign it. I'd love to. I'd be honored. Great. Thank Thanks. you so much, buddy. Here, let's, let's take up a fresh little section here. And an old tradition has begun anew. Here we go. Very cool. After two years of planning and debate, the Chad Kruger Blackwater has already become a bestseller for Gibson. So it looks like things are ready for price tags. Yeah, just about ready as soon as uh, these guys say that they're ready. He's everything's on, everything's shiny. It's, it's all tuned up and ready to go? Tuned up and ready to go. Okay. Just needs to be checked one last time. I like the, uh, I like the amount of quality control. Oh, yeah. We're all proud of it. This is the Blackwater final right here. This is it. Maybe you should be the final judge of this one. I, I, I'll be the final QC? Yeah. Quality yeah. control? Yeah. Thank you, sir. So we've seen, I've seen every single stage today of what it takes to make one of these guitars um, all the way down until you plug it in, tune it up, and, uh, and uh, get ready for uh, stage. Now, I got to thank you for taking the time today to make sure that I got to see the entire procedure of what it takes to make a Blackwater guitar and every other guitar here at Gibson. I'm going to play us out. Oof. Do you sell these amps too? <laughs> <laughs>
I think I'm going to take this home with me. Very cool. That's a Blackwater guitar right there. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thank you.